Welcome to Private Equity Profits. Clifford Locks is a certified board of director, a trusted confidant to CEOs, C-level exec, and high potential employees to help them clarify goals, unlock their potential, and create actionable strategic plans. Seth Green is the nation's foremost authority on growing your portfolio companies with direct response marketing. He is the founder of the direct response marketing firm, Market Domination LLC. And he is an eight-time best-selling author who has been interviewed on NBC, CBS, Forbes Inc., CBS Money Watch, and many more. Cliff and Seth interview top players in the financial sector, focusing on private equity firms, venture capital companies, and family offices, discussing developments and trends shaping the industry. These experts will share with you how they've grown their businesses and increased profit, and how you can too. And now, here's your host, Seth Green. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be interviewing Garrett Barosian, Chief Development Officer and Managing Partner of Wave Capital Partners, LLC. Wave Capital is a nationally recognized leader in accomplishing structured funding solutions for deserving projects where other industry organizations have failed. Garrett, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Seth. So happy to be with you today. All right, so let's go back in time a little bit. Um, how did Wave Capital get started? Well, Wave Capital Partners has been an iteration of companies that my father's had going back to the early 80s. And uh, we formed Wave Capital back in 2012. And I officially joined in 2014. And I've been the uh, chief development officer and managing partner of the firm. And since 2014, I have generated nearly 100% of all of our new deal flow, investors, lenders, clients. And I really wanted to expand our footprint from one state and we expanded to six states. And we've been representing clients now in the past year, year and a half in about 11 or 12 US states. And uh, we even represent a client in Puerto Rico and one in the United Kingdom. So we're constantly growing and expanding and it's been a joy. I love networking and uh, business developing and relationship building. And it's been a joy working with my father and growing our firm and our footprint and really excited about working with our clients and how we're able to help them in the capital markets. Awesome. So let's do a deep dive. Let's go in further into that. Who are the types of clients that you're serving? Sure. You know, 65% of our client base is real estate related, commercial and residential. And I would say 35% are people in the tech industry, for example, like Silicon Valley. We're representing energy companies, healthcare based companies, you know, consumer products based companies, industrial manufacturing related. So it runs a wide gamut. We're pretty agnostic on the type of clients we represent. And we raise capital anywhere from a million, if you can imagine, to a billion plus. You know, it is common to get deal flow in and we get them referred in by major banks and law firms. But to get deal flow, that requires multiple tranches of financing. And whether we're responsible for one or multiple tranches of capital raising, we have a wide footprint and the expanded capabilities to help so many people. Awesome, so you're talking about raising capital or providing funding solutions where other people in the industry have failed. So how did that sweet spot kind of evolve, kind of evolve to get where you guys kind of like come in and fix the mess or clean up or actually deliver on what other people promised and failed? Well, that's a really good question. I'm so glad you asked us because our business model is fundamentally different than commercial real estate brokerage or brokerage in general. We have a fiduciary relationship with our clients and we're sort of the consulting advisory type of relationship to our clients. And when we get deal flow, typically we're referred in by, as I mentioned before, major banks and law firms or people such as those I've uh, introduced to the company, and I'm pretty active on social media, LinkedIn, having gone to networking events before, having worked at big companies such as ESPN, NBC Universal, serving on the board of directors for the Charlotte Chamber of Commerce, and you know, being resourceful and being able to find deals that are hard to come by by other firms, or we have clients who come to us where they couldn't get funding elsewhere working with other groups. And they come to us and they see that we're looking to personalize every relationship. We're building a lifelong bond with these clients and we want to be able to represent them now and in the future. And they realize that we offer a more customizable approach on how we represent our clients and they feel that rapport right away when we get to work. 
Absolutely. So we can make up a name for them if the identity of your clients is confidential, obviously. Yeah. But let's talk about a hypothetical client. Why did the financing, what type of financing did they look for previously? Why did that fail that you guys were then brought in to fix it? Well, you know, not to name names, but I mean, right. with a client, let's say um, real estate client A in state B with opportunity C, right? So, you know, this particular client, they had worked with name brand, large corporation in the past, real estate brokerage company, wasn't able to get funding through that organization's help. And when we were referred in by a major law firm in the Northeast, we were able to identify fairly quickly in fewer months, we were able to identify the right funding group, which happened to be a group that looks for opportunity zone type of investments. And it was a $22 million transaction. And we were able to find the right capital for that transaction. And again, we're consulting, we're advisory, we're representing the clients. We're not just bridging point A to point B, so to speak, but we're really uh, being consultants in the capital markets industry. And it's our clients, once we introduce them to the capital funding sources, then it helps bring the deal into fruition with our assistance to an executed closing. Why do you think that these types of deals, these people, these clients, they're having issues getting the funding they're looking for in the capital markets now so that, I mean, that's kind of why you guys exist to solve the problem. Why do you think right. that problem exists? Well, I mean, in the economic cycle, it doesn't matter if you're a small, medium, large company or even smaller, like a startup company. You could be representing very sophisticated seasoned clients, but it just so happens that maybe they have issues with already having gone through their existing network of relationships. Perhaps, you know, they haven't been as known in a certain industry where they're raising or looking for us to help them raise capital, but they were successful and have a track record in other industries. Maybe where we're in an environment where there is loosening of credit or tightening of credit, Right now, we're dealing with you know high inflation, a lot of productivity, a lot of things happening in the market. You know, business is really good right now, and you know we're forming strategic relationships at Wave Capital that allows us to cover a wider reach of relationships in the market. You know, people looking for capital. But let's say, for example, if interest rates raise and that causes you know a pullback and then causes deflation let's say and that kind of tightens credit and that also you know slows down the economy ever the more reason for groups such as a real estate client an energy client a technology based client a healthcare based client ever the more reason to look for us to help them get into the alternative financing and investment space and to have a more one-on-one -on -one relationship where we're not just again putting point A to point B but we're also providing the consulting to really help them, you know, dot their I's and cross their T's to get a deal done. Absolutely. I think that makes a lot of sense. What are you finding are some of the trends that are affecting, you know, credit, affecting the capital markets? What do you think? I mean, you guys are kind of famous for seeing where the puck is going. So right. what would you say, what are your types of predictions for, let's say, the next few years? Well, you know, it's interesting because even if you ask an economist, it's always hard for them to even predict, you know, 12 to 24 months out. But I would hope that, you know, in the next few years, the trends that we're seeing, especially in the private equity space, because this is a podcast that is focused on private equity, you know, private equity is being really big now in renewable energy. And it is also in the single family rental market space. And, you know, we have clients in both those industries and private equity, they like to, you know, work quickly, you know, hold periods are not that long. And they're really trying to really maximize an opportunity from an investment standpoint. Are these enterprise clients going to be really making a really good profit in the future going to take off? We would wish that private equity sometimes could be more like patient capital. But at the end of the day, private equity is a very necessary commodity when it comes to capital raising. And we hope that more private equity firms will be looking at renewable energy, single family rental housing, uh, continue to look at multifamily, really, you know, looking at alternative reality or virtual reality type of, you know, applications, you know, things that have to do with artificial intelligence or maybe things outside the nine dots. 
or that nobody would really think about. But, you know, we hope that it's a well-diversified portfolio that these private equity firms are beefing up in their, in their respective uh, portfolios. Absolutely. With everything going on, what were some of the best investments you made, some of the best deals you brokered during the pandemic? Well, you know, personally, we don't invest in our transactions. I mean, on occasion, historically, as a firm, uh, we had one time or another. But in terms of, as you had mentioned, brokering a deal, you know, again, we go back to being the fiduciary to our clients and not being seen as brokers. So I would say like helping the clients on their behalf negotiate a transaction, let's say. I mean, last year, it was particularly more in the real estate space than, and than anything. But I feel like this year is going to be a little bit different. More Silicon Valley type tech companies that have to do with energy, healthcare. I mentioned AR, VR type of deals. And again, we are really interested also in, you know, business services, collaborative co-working space companies. We're representing a, a group in that space as well. So again, by being agnostic, we kind of just go where the tide is going. We really try to see, okay, if we can, you know, make an introduction today that can fund a deal tomorrow because right place, right time, it meets all the investment criteria. You know, when I'm talking to different investors and lenders, whether they're private equity firms, venture capital firms, you know, institutional grade companies, hedge funds, pension funds, and you're know, talking to these managers of these capital uh, related portfolios, you can read on their website, but you can also pick up the phone, talk to them. They'll tell you what exactly they're seeing in the market, you know, what trends they're seeing, what type of deals they like. And, you know, they have to be selective because, you know, they're representing a, a pool of funds that, that were put up by other major companies or individuals. So you got to really have a pulse of, you know, what the market is. And I've been doing this role for seven years and, you know, continue to learn more and more every day. And, you know, that's the great thing about this business. You're constantly learning and adjusting and seeing what works and how your company can improve every day and servicing as many clients with their capital needs as much as possible. Absolutely. You have achieved so much success for your business and your clients. Um, what's your biggest challenge now? I think, you know, you're only one person. I mean, honestly, it's simple as that. I feel like I have the capabilities of maybe two, three, four people. Uh, but, you know, it, it's it's a very cerebral type of position I'm in. It's, it's more mentally intensive than physically intensive. Obviously, you're using your mind, you're, you're having to strategize, you're having to plan, you're having to do research, you're calling people on the phone, you're networking with people on LinkedIn, you're bridging the gap. You know, I just contributed to an article to a major publication the other day and just talking about how, you know, you got to be a relationship builder. You got to be like the civil engineer, the proverbial uh, civil engineer. You're bridging gaps, you're bridging relationships from one point to another. And you really want to make sure that you have all the resources and all the time and efforts that are going into being a person who works smarter rather than harder to make sure that you're getting to all your clients and making sure you're doing the best job possible. And, you know, we're very proud that all of our clients can vouch for a performance of being successful and also being able to help. Awesome. I know that you're a voracious learner and networker. What are uh, some of the books you're reading, some of the podcasts you're listening to? Where do you go? What inspires you? You know, really, I have to go back to sports. I mean, I love watching even interviews from like years and decades ago of professional athletes. Growing up, I was a big fan of Michael Jordan and having had the privilege of meeting Michael Jordan, and a lot of other famous athletes, you know, they're the greatest motivators, but also looking at certain book authors or, you know, even actors. I really can learn a lot. You can really learn a lot from a particular person, a particular industry who has a very skilled craft that very few people have. Uh, listening to, you know, Oprah Winfrey's Masterclass uh, podcast, my wife and I, last year during the pandemic, we were watching a lot of those or listening to a lot of those podcasts. And it's amazing, again, it's not too hard to find when you have a computer and when you have an iPhone that you're able to really tap into a lot of different podcasts and interviews and really find a way to just motivate yourself every day. And I consider myself to be somebody who never had to be motivated. I was motivated to begin with a lot of energy, a lot of passion. I love what I do. And you can learn a lot from everybody, but I feel like 
I'm coming into my own where in my respective business and, you know, with Wave Capital, making myself available to a lot of different media outlets and publications to really get my ideas out there. I'm looking to write a book and I'm already starting to do that. And uh, that's very exciting. And really the sky's the limit when you have a passion, the sky's the limit. And I think a lot of successful people share a lot of different similarities who have also went through trials and tribulations as well to get to where they are. And I think that's the biggest motivation is to be motivated and to be inspired by so many other people before me. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about the book. That sounds exciting. Well, I definitely want to, you know, write about where I have started writing about. I want to definitely help inspire people even after me, right? I want to leave a legacy. I really feel like I've carved a niche in the uh, business development, relationship building, professional networking space. And, you know, I'm coming up with little different ways to write out my thoughts and how I want to strategize, putting chapters together and, you know, really putting some nice touches and making the book my own and also reaching out to very successful, influential people who I've known for a decade plus who could perhaps, you know, write testimonials or someone write the forward to my book. So I'm contemplating who might that be, but I'm really excited to hopefully have that published, you know, within the next year. Awesome. Well, we would certainly look for, have you back on the show to talk about the book once it comes out. This has been Seth Green with Garrett from Wave Capital Partners. Uh, Garrett, for our folks watching and listening who want to learn more about Wave Capital, where is the best place for us to send them? Yes, definitely. You can send them to www.wavecapitalpartners.com. Obviously, uh, you can find all of our, um, we're revamping our website and you're going to find all of the uh, publications that I've been featured in and all the broadcasts I've been featured in. And, you know, we were in hiring new staff this month. So it's a really exciting time. And, you know, my contact information is available on our website. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And, you know, again, I want to make myself accessible to all the entrepreneurs out there who are looking to be inspired, looking to pursue their passion and make a considerable, you know, sizable impact in this world for generations to come. Awesome. That's a beautiful message. Can't wait for the book. Everybody go check out Garrett at wavecapitalpartners.com. Garrett, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Seth. Really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you again soon. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening. We'll see you next time.